Close your eyes. Focus on your breath. Take a few good, long, deep in and out breaths to notice where you feel the breathing. And let your attention settle right there. Let it stay right there. Now, to stay there is going to require that you be mindful. In other words, you remember what you're doing. And you're alert. You're alert to what's actually happening. And you add a third quality, which is called ardency, which is you really try to make it stick. And that doesn't mean just force of the will. You try to use your ingenuity. What makes the breath interesting? Well, you can try breathing in different ways to see what effect that has on the body, what effect it has on the mind. You find something has a good effect, you stick with it. In other words, you have something to explore right here. You're creating a sense of well-being inside that allows you to stay. Now, the sense of well-being is good not only for you, but good for other people. The more well-being you have inside, the less you're going to go around trying to take well-being from other people, or take well-being, or try to find your happiness in ways that create divisions. I mean, the good things of the world are what? There's wealth, and then there's status, and there's praise, and then there's physical pleasure. But the happiness that comes from these sort of things is the happiness that creates divisions. If you gain wealth, somebody else has got to lose. When they talk about making a killing on the stock market, well, some people actually do get killed as a result of somebody else making a big profit. At least they suffer from somebody else's making a big profit. So that kind of happiness creates divisions. Again, there's status. You gain status, somebody else has to lose it, or at least they can't get the status you have. And same with praise. You're going to be praised more than somebody else. Okay, they're going to be jealous. It creates divisions. And as for the pleasures we gain in life, a lot of those pleasures are things that it's like food. You eat it, and nobody else can eat it. And John Sawat once said, you know, he would bow down to a god if there was a god who'd say you could, you could eat, and everybody else gets full. But that's not the way it works. You eat, and that's it for that food. After it comes through you, what is it? It's excrement. Nobody can use it. You have to use it maybe as fertilizer at the best, but you can't use it as food. Which means that that kind of happiness is a happiness that creates divisions. But the happiness that comes from practicing the Dharma, from training the mind, that heals those divisions, erases those divisions. It's part of a larger plan of practice where there's generosity, virtue, and then the development of the mind through concentration. And the happiness that comes from all these things erases divisions. When you're generous with others, okay, they benefit, you benefit too. When you observe the precepts, like the precepts we took just now, no killing, no stealing, no illicit sex, no lying, no taking of intoxicants. When you follow these precepts, you're not the only one who benefits. Everybody else around you benefits as well. And when you meditate, you get a sense of well-being inside. You're not so hungry for other people's pleasures. Now, at the same time, you're developing good qualities that will show in your thoughts, your words, your deeds, the way you interact with other people. You'll be giving less free rein to greed, aversion, and delusion, which means that other people don't have to be affected by your greed, aversion, and delusion. So this is a kind of happiness that spreads its benefits around. You can even dedicate it to people who've died, because the current of the mind goes much beyond just what you're experiencing right here in the body right now. We sense a lot about one another's currents of the mind. Often it's subconscious, but it's there. And so you're sending out good energy all the time. It can't help but benefit the people around you. So in this way, the pleasure that you're finding, the happiness you're finding through training the mind, generosity, virtue, meditation. It erases all the divisions that are being created in the world where people go scrambling after wealth and status. And we give them a good example. So, you know, a true happiness is one that doesn't have boundaries like that, one that erases boundaries where everybody benefits. Now, that kind of happiness is worth bowing down to, worth respecting. That's why we bow down to the Buddha so much. He taught us a happiness that doesn't have any blame, doesn't have any drawbacks, doesn't cause anybody any harm. That thing is very rare to find in the world.